What's up? This is Grant Gustin. You are watching the Flashpoint on the Halftime Show.
the first thing that's been said all across the country about what's going on with publicity. Once he does find out about it, how's he going to feel about the organization and what she's up to? Yeah, I mean, look, he does trust her, but that doesn't mean that he has to agree with her. And, and we really see, like, we did our first crossover, and it was like Flash versus Arrow. Uh, you could you could almost call episode 19 Team Arrow versus Team Fantasy. Yeah. Hi, Phil. Hey, how you doing? Uh, with Superman Homepage and Krypton uh, Chronicles. Oh, sorry? With Superman Homepage and Krypton Chronicles. Okay, hey. <laughs> All right, so um, you've done a lot of tri uh, time travel story writing. Not personally, but yeah, our characters. <laughs> All right, all right. Um, so what do you like best about writing um, time travel and Legends of Tomorrow? Like in terms of coming up with stories and stuff like that, what is your most, most favorite thing about that? Well, I guess what I like is there's no chance to get bored um, because every episode is uh, a, a totally from scratch. It's like a chance to do a movie every week. And uh, yeah, I, I guess I've always been a fan of, of history and also a fan of uh, absurd comedy. And so it's like the perfect blend. Um, you know, I think that we think of history, we, we tend to sort of uh, elevate it to a place that it doesn't necessarily deserve. Because like, if you look around the modern world, it's ridiculous. People are ridiculous. And somehow when things get uh, confined in history, started we sort of, uh, they, they become desiccated and kind of lose their, 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 their heartbeat and they also lose their kind of, uh, you know, like when they said hey, it's, it's, it's sort of fun to, to take like the most exalted eras in of history and then just kind it's of kind of take a take a bit of a piss off because like it's like there, there's nothing is sacred on our show and so whether it's the founding fathers or whether it's Al Capone right we can find a way of looking at events in our history with like a slightly off-center sense of humor because like I think that's what we deserve as human beings because we're it's ridiculous species that's a good point. So what inspired you to write the Excalibur episode? Are you a fan of medieval things? Um, I of that era? I can't remember exactly whose idea it was. I mean, it's funny. Like, at the start of every season, each writer probably has two or three ideas that they're like, we were doing this. Um, that wasn't mine. For me, the Apollo space mission, that was one where I was just like, there's no way we're going to this season without doing that, um, and, and it's and it's and it's great because uh, you know we have you know we have a J.R.R. Tolkien episode uh, coming up uh, very soon, and uh, yeah, one of our writers, uh, Keto Shimizu, was just uh, you know she was like, we have to do this, and it's so it's, you know the way I describe it, it's kind of like remember like fifth grade where they'd say like if you could have one person to dinner who would it be? Like that's kind of how we approach our writers' room. And so, she was like, there are Tolkien, and for me it was just like, I want to know the Apollo astronauts. And so, uh, it's, it's, it's such an easy uh, show to break, because there's always, you know, somebody who's passionate about something. So, uh, how do you approach um, the crossover episodes, writing those, as opposed to, like, the regular episodes? Is there a difference in mood and tone? I mean, there must be, because that yeah. show feels a little different. It is, um, because you're, you're doing it in concert with the other um, two shows, and next year with the other three shows. Um, it's, uh, it's much different. There's a good idea. Because, um,
it's like Once I get it home, adds a I dimensionality where it's it's well, it really makes so your head hurt to, and, uh, to figure well, out the logistics. But before you get to logistics, you have to come up with a story that works. That so it's it's really difficult because you know it's going to be just a logistical nightmare to make it happen, and you kind of have to take a deep breath and be like, okay, so what is the best story? Let's not worry about all the impossibilities. Let's just break the story, and then it's like a month of talking to line producers and looking right, at right. schedules and yeah. <laughs> all right. So you think you'll ever branch off to the movies? Uh, I, I, I like watching them. I'm, I, I have a tension span of like a potato moth. So if uh, <laughs> if I don't have a new story to write every eight days, I'll probably uh, drive myself crazy. All right. Thank you, Phil. Phil it was great talking to you. Yeah, my pleasure. All right. Bye bye. Yeah, definitely. I, I, how'd yeah. How'd you feel about somebody else playing the role? Uh, not a problem. I mean, you know, they, they, I, I'm pretty busy uh, as it is. Uh, over on over on Legends of Tomorrow, and they did a fun job, and uh, it was cool. Well, thank you. Can you give us a quick sign off? You're like, hey, you're watching that hashtag. Hey, you're watching that hashtag. Show. Tell me, how do you like uh, performing with uh, Melissa Buenis? She's great. She's, I mean, we got. Fortunately for us, we got a really, really fantastic cast. We've got. Um, Melissa, Kyla Lee, um, now we've got Chris Wood, uh, Jeremy Jordan, who's hilarious, and McCard. We've got a really, really fun cast, and actually, I enjoy going to work. So um, it's 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 a fun place to be. It's great, great, and of course, the show is physically challenging. I how do you prepare for all the fight scenes? And, and well, I think you, it's important that you keep yourself physically fit. And um, most of us go to the gym, and, and we've got a little gym at the studio too. So you've got to keep yourself in shape and try and eat right, which is sometimes frustrating because you just want to pick the pizzas. But uh, so you, you know, you need to be careful what you eat uh, while you're shooting, and, and just keep yourself physically fit. Do you read the comic books at all, or did you read the comic books to prepare? I did. My, I, I got a, I, somebody gave me a, a, someone gave me a pile of uh, DC John Jones um, Martian Manhunter books, and I devoured them. I thought they were wonderful, uh, and I just think he's a great character. And I feel very lucky to, to be playing. Him. So when you do the crossovers, yeah. um, is is that like? Uh, do you have to actually prepare for that show too, and find out and, and no, keep I mean, up on it, of, or do you just go right into it? To, you get to the point where you know you just got to learn your lines and, and just turn up for work, and uh, it doesn't matter what set you're on. But it's nice to see the other characters and see how right, they right, do. Right. So it's it's interesting observing how their special effects crew work, or how their um, uh, you know how their effects work, and uh, it, it was fun, it was fun to cross over. So um, how did you get the role essentially? Did you they just asked a normal me, audition? They, oh, really? I, I think um, that, I think they'd seen my work in David Est as David Estes, and I think they wanted an authority figure. Um, and it's been a lot of it's been a lot of fun to play. So I'm blessed that they came my way. That's great, fantastic. It's been great talking to you. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, David. Take care. All right, bye. -bye. <laughs> Hi Brandon, how are you? Superman. All right, all right. Oh, so now you play. Um, oh, I'm with Superman Homepage, by the yeah, way. Yeah, awesome. Hi guys. Thanks all right. For your support over the years. Awesome. So you're playing two superheroes now. Yeah. I mean, you have. Right. So, um, what is the main difference between playing the Atom and Superman to you? Well, I mean, just the mindset, right? So you have powers. The power differences, obviously, but the fact that uh, that Kal El is from Krypton and, and has um, knows the massive power and the responsibility that he feels coming from that power, where Ray has created the power and feels responsibility, but maybe feels he doesn't know if he has enough strength to do, or he could feels like he could do more because right. he doesn't have as much. Um, capacity as he could or as somebody else. So um, I guess that's kind of a big difference in who they are. Ray is kind of always reaching up and Superman is trying to has all the power but still is like, am I doing enough? So actually they have that that is a similarity in a way. That's interesting. Um, that made any sense. <laughs> <laughs> no, it made perfect sense. Um, so since Ray is a uh, human, yeah. uh, what part of yourself do you put into the character, even though he does have power? Oh, a lot. I mean, uh, you know, I when I started 
started playing Ray, I just uh, started geeking out on health and nutrition, on nutrition and science, and uh, something called Bulletproof Coffee, which is ironic. Uh, but I gave my, it, uh, I had a lot more energy and ability to communicate, and Ray was written fast talking and, and you know, kind of a more of a wise guy. Um, but I put a little more uh, kindness to him and um, I just used that energy that I had now from just life and fuel that into into Ray and making him fast talking and happy and passionate. So that's a lot of what I, I'm trying to bring to life too. That's fantastic. Yeah. That's fantastic. So you prepare pretty good physically then for the role. Yeah, I sure I do my best to all act pretty much every actor has to try to stay in shape as best they can. But. All right. Yeah. Thank you, thank, thank you. you. Thanks. Right here? Hello again. Hey, how you doing? Thanks for having me. Yeah. Oh, okay. Just, hi. Hi, I'm Janice Catton from The Flash. Thanks for having me. Don't be theater. Perfect. Thank yeah. you. Hi. Thanks, guys. What are you having a call? Basically, just kind of like, hey, you're watching the Flash. I will always say that I'm You do a quick you know, call out and you say you are watching the Flash Point on that half side show. The Flash Point? Yeah, that's the name of our show. On that half side show? Yeah, cool. Yeah. So, yeah. You're gonna take it and then I'll What's up? This is Grant Gustin. You are watching the Flash Point on the half side show. You're going. You mind taking a quick picture? No, no, no. Thank you. That was slick. Okay, I'm getting that with the paper. With the paper, yeah. <laughs> Come talk. Actor. Very quick, tough, man. flashy interview with the Flash. Cool. Uh, can you talk about the crossover that airs on Tuesday and what it was like to work with Melissa and uh, yeah. Darren Chris again? There were all kinds of like crossovers going on. So yeah, Melissa and Darren. Like, it was so cool to be reunited with them. I didn't get to do much with Melissa on Queen, so it was great to do something with her. Um, but Zach Woodley was our choreographer, and he also choreographed Glee, so that really helped us feel comfortable. But Chris Wood, who's on Supergirl, also was a musical theater major with me at Elon University. And we we were very good friends and we've never been on a film set together. So that was bizarre. And Darren, Chris and Carlos Valdez studied musical theater together at Michigan University. So it was like this weird melting pot of all these friends that have known each other for a decade and all of us connecting. It was crazy. Awesome. Yeah. Well, looking forward to yeah, cool. everybody seeing oh, yeah. it. I saw it yesterday. So, so how did you like working with Mark Hamill? Oh, I love Mark Hamill. I always love working with Mark Hamill. <laughs> all right. Thank you. I'm just going to open this up for a second because this is the closest I will ever get to the Oscar stage. <laughs> I'm doing this impossible exercise with the bar. Ladies and gentlemen, that helps. Could you play Supergirl Salt in that for me? Do something for all, man. My hero.
I'm gonna try to circle back there, but they won't let me through that way. Uh, we'll figure it out. Melissa! Thanks everyone. Thank you for the next show. Thanks so much. We'll try to figure it out. Oh, yeah, yeah. We'll get it going. Hi. Hey, Melissa. I just saw, Bri saw Brianna as my spin instructor, too. She's amazing. Yeah, and uh, she works at. Thank you. Her name is Melissa, too. Melissa. Thank you. Melissa. Alright, I think they're gonna try to circle around. You go ahead. Thank you. 